فبما رحمة من الله لنت لهم ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لانفضوا من حولك تقال العسار العظام به ويعد الهوى ككبش ذبيح بذكر الإله according to the degrees that they did in other words, some people are extremely rebellious. Some people are somewhat rebellious. Some people are not praying anymore. Or some people are doing some haram things in life and they're rebelling. Some people have left Islam altogether. And now we're cursing Islam and cursing the Prophet and cursing the Quran. That's happening too. As I close to the parents that may be going through this kind of suffering. This is a reality that even Prophets were not spared. Nuh alayhi salam had to face it. You know, you have Yaqub alayhi salam had to face it. Right? Ibrahim السلام, was terrified of it, even though he has fantastic sons, he was terrified of it, he made dua about it. So it's not like we're ever going to be free from that concern. But I will tell you one thing. In the ayah there's an ishara, there's an indication. When you are, when your son is 18, 19, 20, 25, 28, 30, he's an adult. Maybe a young adult, maybe a very immature adult, maybe one that makes horrible, terrible mistakes in life, but then again, he's still an adult. And when that child or that, that man or that woman is an adult and they're making mistakes in life, what is your role? You and I have to remember where no, the rufi al qalam, the pen has been lifted as far as our responsibility is concerned. Our job was to raise them to the point where they become adults. Once they are adults, they are directly responsible to Allah. The more you try to control them at that age, the more you try to tell them what to do, the more you try to tell your 18-year-old, your 20-year-old, your 25-year-old to pray, 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 the farther they will run from the prayer, the more annoyed they will become. They will actually distance themselves from you. They will want nothing to do with you. They will see you, the mother who loves them. But as soon as they see you, you haven't even opened your mouth. Here we go, mom's going to start her lecture about prayer again. Mom's going to give me a whole talk about how I need to make tawbah or how I need to stop talking to that girl. Or how you need to stop, oh God, I, you know what, I'm not even coming over. I'm just going to go out. I don't want to deal with it. And the mom says, I'm trying to do da'wah. What do you want me to do? Not do da'wah, not invite my child, not make them better. Well, actually the way you're doing it is making things worse. The way you're doing it is making things worse. Understand that there are two levels of the relationship you have with your children, especially when they get older. There's a spiritual relationship in which you're trying to give them advice, nasiha, counsel. That's a spiritual relationship. And then there's an emotional relationship. A mother is a mother. She loves her child. No matter if he's the worst human being on the earth, she's still gonna love her child. And th that child, that son, doesn't matter if he becomes 45, he still wants emotional support from his mom. He, should, he still turns to his mother for, for love and care. He still should feel like, I, no matter who turns me away, my mother will never turn me away. These two things, your role as a, as a spiritual guide, a spiritual counselor, and your role as a mother or a father are two separate things. You have to keep those two things separate. And sometimes when our children rebel and go away from Allah, then they don't need you to be a da'i. They don't need you to give them spiritual advice because that will push them further away. They just need you to be a mom right now. Just make them food. Don't talk about deen for a while. Don't bring it up. Because you know the last 10 times you brought it up, what happened? You should learn from your own experience. Advise the father, don't lose your cool. Don't start complaining. He comes, the son comes home once in a month. And that one month, the father says, oh, you finally show up? And he says, this is why I don't come. Because you talk like this. And he walks out again. What did you gain? What did you gain? But he needs to demonstrate beautiful patience. He needs to keep a smile, maintain at least the emotional part of the relationship. How are you doing son? Are you eating well? Is everything okay? Don't bring up deen. Just maintain the relationship. Why? Why am I saying that? Because shaitan will come to that foolish young man or that foolish young woman and say to them, your parents hate you. They always criticize you. They're always nagging you. They're always lecturing you. Forget them, live your life. Get away, they don't love you. If they loved you, would they talk to you like this? And he's gonna, he or she are, are gonna go far and far and far away. <laughs>
Mm-hmm.